Hello, I am Pastor Matthew Verhoek, and today we're going to do a commentary of Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to, how far are we going today? 1 to 8. And in this, there is a parable, and this follows along, we always need to know the context, from Jesus' statement dealing with the end times at the end of chapter 17. And we're going to see that theme of the end play out here in an interesting way as we go through this text. So keep an eye on that and we get to the immediate issue. And he spoke, and this obviously Jesus spoke a parable to them. Or a parable, it's a, it's a story to make a point, usually one point, and they're usually not allegories, and we're going to really see that this time, in order to show the necessity of always praying and never giving up. So this is going to be for the purpose to encourage his disciples to always pray. And here we get the Calvin quote of the day, which is just a, a beautiful, a beautiful piece here that we know that perseverance in prayer is a real and difficult attainment. And it is a manifestation that of our unbelief that when our first prayers are not successful, we immediately throw away not only hope, but all ardor of prayer. And this is really like getting to the point where prayer is not just a thing where, okay, we're going to pray this and it's going to happen like this. But, but Jesus, in answering our prayers in a way that seems slower than we might want, is teaching us something very valuable and what that something is we're gonna we're gonna try to see in the text so this is the this is a parable to show the purpose of prayer so saying and now the words of the words of christ there was a certain judge in a certain city and uh this is kind of how luke speaks some translations won't say certain but that's that's just uh the the greek language coming through who neither feared god nor respected Man, And so this is going to be a judge, and this is going to be a judge compared to God, that's going to be where it's going, who doesn't uh, fear God nor respect man. And this kind of judge, you got to think of uh, in, in that time, he must have been so wealthy and powerful that he didn't need any friends, didn't need, need to do any favors, didn't need to ask any favors. And he, he wasn't a, a religious authority because they said that he did not fear God. So he wasn't acting out of a religious fervor and he was not acting out of a care for people. And now this is just setting up uh, a argument. And we see this often in Jesus' teaching and it's, a, it's kind of a classical technique of arguing from the lesser to the greater. So all the time... Jesus is setting this up. If even this unrighteous judge that neither fears God nor fears, respects man, will give justice in this way, how much more will God give justice? It would be a mistake to read this and say, oh, Jesus is saying that God is an unrighteous judge. Obviously, that is not his point. Again, these are not allegories, but a story to make one point. And Jesus' point is, perseverance in prayer. All right, so then we get to verse 3. We get our second character. And a widow was in that city. Widows, uh, someone who lost their husband. And this is widows in the Bible uh, is commanded to do, give justice to widows again and again. But again, this isn't a judge who gives justice because he doesn't fear God nor respect man. And He did not want to give her justice. Oh, so, sorry, I skipped. Uh, and a widow in that city, and she kept coming to him, and kept coming. This is an, an iterative imperfect. Uh, so so she, was, she, she came again and again to him saying, give me justice from my adversary. And justice is going to be a key word as we go through. And we don't know what the situation probably doesn't matter. Uh, it's 
likely because this does not seem to be a religious leader to probably be some sort of financial thing. Perhaps uh, relatives are tying up her uh, husband who died, his estate, so that uh, so that uh, it becomes very difficult for her to her to live, and so she needs the the judge to to give a judgment in this matter. Now, he did not want to give her justice for a time. And so this is going to set up something important. So justice for a time. And this is an important thing in this parable is that this justice, which, which we're going to see is going to come, has a delay. And the reason for that delay in, in God isn't, isn't going to give. Here it's just like the guy isn't. You know, he's not a just guy, so he's not giving it. But after this, after after a time, he said to himself, and so this kind of, he said to himself, it's kind of like self-speak. Though I do not fear God, nor respect man. I don't know what kind of person would say this, but it's just uh, repeating it to, uh, to make a point. Yet, on account of this woman continually bothering me, I will give her justice so that I am not brought to an end by her beating me. Uh, and this is maybe getting a little goofy uh, in the translation. Uh, some translations have like pestering here. In fact, we're going to look at all the translations for this uh, verse 5 here. And, uh, oh, no, we're going to do it in verse 7. So we're going to look at this this word here, beating me. And uh, this, this word is... Hupo piazzo, uh, literally to strike beneath the eye, to give a black eye. And it's used figuratively to annoy greatly, pester, wear out. Um, and, and some, they have like her continually, you know, you know, beating me down or wearing, wearing me out. And so the, the, the translators want to give some figurative way to show this, but, but literally it's like, she's, she's literally beating me. And obviously she's not going to actually beat the judge because that would be a bad way to get what you wanted. But, uh, we, we use these, these parables of, ah, oh, he's just, it's, she's just killing me. And, and that's, that's the idea here. Like he's, he's talking about how she's just bothering her so much. Uh, I decided to translate it really literally by, cause I think people can get the, can, can get the, the picture in their head. Um, and, and he doesn't want to get brought to an end by her, you know, beating him down. Um, so this is the parable. Literally, unjust judge has a woman who just, by her continually coming to him, eventually wears him out, wears him down to the point where, you know, I'm going to give her justice. Justice again. I'm going to give her justice because... You know, she is bothering me so much. Now, then it says, and the Lord, and again, you know, uh, Luke does not say Jesus here, but Lord, and this really just heightens the the effect of, of uh, what this statement is going to be. Listen to what the unrighteous judge says. And so, the argument here, again, from the lesser to the to the greater, is that even if an unrighteous judge is going to give justice, if the widow keeps coming and coming and coming, it doesn't lose heart, how much more is, now verse 7, and will not God give justice to his elect, his, his chosen people from before the foundation of the earth, who cry out to him day and night, day and night, will he delay long over him? And we're going to talk about this. This phrase is very, this, this phrase is very debated. I'm going to do italics means something else. Um, I'm going to underline it. Uh, we're going to talk about the phrase. So, if even this, uh, this unrighteous judge will give justice. How much more will God, who is perfectly just, give justice to give justice to them? Now the 
the implication here, and this is sort of the, the application point, who cry out to him day and night, is that prayer in the Christian church should not lose heart and should be night and day. It should be this continually asking of God. And then there's this phrase, and will he delay long over them? And literally, this is, will he be patient on over them? Be, be patient over them? And it's, it's a really hard phrase to, to translate. We're going to look at, uh, we're going to do a, a translation comparison here. The ESV, uh, will he delay long over them? And that's kind of how I translate it. So it's like, uh, will he, will he, you know, take a long time to respond to their pleas, which like the judge, it, it, it implies that there's going to be a, a time period where, where God isn't going to be acting when you want him to be thinking back to chapter 17, where you will desire to see the days of the son of man, but you won't see it. And yet God is going to respond. Uh, King James, though he bear long with them. And that's really Though, though he, and, and that gives you the, the translating that way is it though he it takes a long time, he will give it give give the the elect, um, uh, delay long to help them is he yeah, um, will he keep putting them off, uh, like like and this is sort of a, a rhetorical will he keep you know putting them off and, and the answer would be no he's not it's it's going to be going to be quickly after a time will he keep putting them off is, is nlt nlt very long translation even though he rendered a just decision in the end uh, so don't you think god will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night that's kind of a wordy way to translate all that um will he delay long over him so the options about this uh this phrase here will he delay long um and is it um, God will vindicate because he is patient with them? You, you, could, you could get that idea. It's a little hard if, you, if you're out there and you don't know Greek. It's, it's a little hard to get this um, because the word here of delay is patience. And it's, it's like waiting. And this idea of waiting is present in this text all the way through where uh, right away when the when the lady first asks again and again it, it doesn't justice doesn't come but when it comes it will come but only after delay and and is this phrase talking about the delay that's happening will it, is it emphasizing how long the delay will be or is it along with everything uh emphasizing that that he won't delay and when you translate will he delay long over them it kind of gives the implication it won't be a delay but there is uh, just in the in the word, uh, um, there is an idea that, that it, it will be longer. So it could be, uh, Kai should be, even if, you know, he will give justice, even if he is patient about responding. And I kind of like that. Uh, it puts a lot of phrase for, for the and being uh, uh, even translated like a, a call up even if it could be god will vindicate because he is patient with them and that gives the idea um if you translate patient that his vindication is sort of like you know how he treats the israelites that he is patient with them he doesn't you know judge them but he is patient with their unbelief and maybe that is is phrased uh we'll see it later um the phrase means that God will be patient to their plea, meaning that God will respond after a time. And that's probably the most, you know, common way of understanding it. And uh, uh, of these, I, I kind of, I kind of like the idea that this, this phrase, um, will he delay long over them, means that, that, that God is not going to respond right away, like we saw in the Unrighteous Judge, although he will and this is, you know, keep reading to understand. I say to you, he will ju give justice to them quickly. Now, does quickly here mean uh, soon or does it mean when it comes, it will come uh, suddenly? 
And I really like the idea that it, that it will be sudden. So like the unrighteous judge, you know, crying out, crying out, crying out, and then boom, one day they get justice. And in the same way, I think this is teaching here that uh, the church, the, the Christians should be praying to God and then it'll be patient, patient, patient. Boom, when it comes, it'll come quickly. Then we get the last phrase, and this is so important. Nevertheless, the Son of Man, when he comes, will he find faith on earth? And you have to think, where does this come from? We were just talking about prayer and how you need to be persistent in prayer. And then it goes, the Son of Man, when he comes, and again, he comes, he comes probably quickly, will he find faith on earth? And phrase like a question, you have to wonder, you know, what, what's the, the point here? And again, uh, we remember the context. Jesus was just talking about end times, how Jesus, about the Son of Man's return, and how he's going to, he's going to be judged, going to be like Noah, Lot, things are going to be going around normally, and then boom, the end will come. And so this prayer is most specifically about a prayer for Jesus' return. Come, Lord Jesus, Maranatha. And that as we feel the injustice of the world, that we need not just pray like, Lord, you know, restore this injustice, but, but our biggest prayer is Jesus Christ, come back, return, bring justice on the earth. And you need to see this passage. This whole passage about prayer is primarily about that. Now, I think secondarily, we can see a lesson about prayer, like to be persistent in it. But the first meaning of this is really about Jesus coming back. And now finally in the text, will he find faith on earth? And this is another lesson kind of about faith, that uh, faith is being like the widow. Keep persistent in asking God, even when... You know, we have this delay that when we don't see the answer is that faith means keeping on praying even when we aren't seeing the results. And so in this text, we see the, the end times focus. We see that it teaches us to be patient in prayer and that when there is a delay and, you know, why is there a delay? And it goes back here is that the delay ultimately gives us a opportunity to exercise faith, to build up faith in believing that God will respond. He will respond quickly when he does, even though there will be, there will be delay in, uh, in the response. Thanks. This has been the, uh, this, if you have any questions, you can just leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks.